Okay, folks, uh, Beano Black here, and basically just making this video because the idea that I made a video about the close objects, and you basically just look at the last video before this video, and then we look, I'm sitting around here, and the guy get, makes a comment to the new video that the idea there's no sound. Well, I didn't even play it. Well, I did play it before I uploaded it. I had sound. So then I started getting interested. It's like, well, what the heck? Is it something they don't want us to know? 2008 WL64 on the 20th, coming up here on November. We are six days out. Hall's ass at 34.02 kilometers a second. 122,472 kilometers an hour. 1.1 kilometer big, possible. Smallest it could be is like 500 meters, but more than likely, if they got 1.1 kilometers, most everything has been undersized, okay? So then, I was looking around, and I found something that pretty much looks exactly that it's going to hit. Uh, but not until 2030. It's 2011 SR5. Let's show you some data on this, especially since they anal anal the analysis based on 187 observations spanning 6.6393 days, okay? They just did this on the September 19th, September 26th. It was close to us, okay? Now, I went ahead and spun 2011 SR5 forward on the JP player. Now, the JPL on that date of the 23rd that they're worried about, and we'll go back and hit that, on the 23rd of 2030 is going to be 0 0.982 IU. Now, when I play around with the motion, you know, like this and so forth, the only thing I could figure that they're worried that they would hit, because look at the distance between, that it, just by eyeball view of it, and the IU, right? Well, gravita magnetism is what I'm starting to wonder. But then what makes me wonder about this, since, boom, Venus, Mercury, Earth, it's like an arc, you see? Are they worried about it locking in on Earth because of a magnetic pull? Okay, that's what I'm wondering about because we're going to be direct in line with suns, the sun's normal path through the universe, okay? We're intersecting there, the Earth is, in 2011. Also, this is in the arc of 2011 SR5's Mercury is in its orbit. So, is this somehow it? Because that's the only thing I could see by looking at it. It's the idea that, okay, playing around with it, it's not an alignment, really. But then the idea, looking in the well, that's the only thing I could come up with, is the idea that, bang, bang, Earth's in Sun's magnetical pole, Mercury's in the pole of 2011 SR5, and that's the only thing I can come up with by looking at it. Now, you look at their deal, and you look at Earth object, their program thing, but basically this is the risk, Earth impact risk summary, impact risk, okay? They got zero down here on Earth distance, and they actually give you the hours and minutes on that day, the ninth month, 23rd date, 0.52. So they got it down to a Nat's ass sometime in that area. They got a distance on our Earth zero, okay? Impact probability 3.7 to 0 0.9 and they're also worried about the idea the size is not very it's a pretty decent size not the biggest thing we've seen coming around but that's why I was sitting here looking at and thinking about this week because we go to RSOE EDS and we got such a massive in six days from right now a massive 34.02 kilometers a second 122,000 way bigger and faster than the one I was wondering about down here on the 9th of December, the last video. Then I went and looked at what was close on the Fireball Network and basically had something that was close. Uh, basically, it was, there was no audio to it, but we had this come by close on, if I can move around here, the idea that on the 12th, we had at very early in the morning, on not even 1 o'clock, UTC Zulu, not even one o'clock Zulu, UTC. It was really early in the morning. 
it was this close. We had an object, 0 0.081 IU. So go back and watch my last video on because I didn't get any audio to it. For some reason, they took it off. Something happened. Okay, so then you need to go watch it because basically I had no audio showing you this. The idea that I'm looking at this. I found a new page on because I looked at. I found something with some address for the old, you know, pre-2006 projections. So then I went to this impact century risk table. And wham, what looks at me in the eyeballs, and okay, everything's far out, right? Yeah, I'll probably be dead. Bam. Well, I'm planning to be around 2030, but even more than, there we go, 2013. It's got 512 potential impacts. They only found it in 2011. It's 2011 UG169. So, you got to check out and wonder about that. I think I got that on... So that 169, we don't have to worry about that till 2013, okay? And we don't have to worry about this until September 23rd of 2030. And what is up with September 23rd, 2030? Because the only thing I can see is some kind of magnetic thing of the arc. The alignment arc and also the arc of the sun, because that's the path of the sun is the yellow line. And the earth will be on that. Will it add magnetic pull, and are they worried about it dropping down because it moves that way? It's kind of be coming towards the Earth. Are they worried about that dropping in the well or something? There's something up because otherwise they wouldn't have. Otherwise they wouldn't have this on the 9th, 23, 23rd date, ninth month, 2030. Earth zero distance and have it listed on the Earth Impact Risk Summary, and it's only one risk date. It only has this date, and they did this many observations on September 19th when it was close by here. And yes, it was close by here. If you look at the last video I just made with the one that didn't have any audio, it was close by here. This uh, either September, you'll see the date because you'll see 2011 SR5. I got it pulled up and played it. So pay attention to this. In 2042, there's something that has six potential impacts. Uh, like I say, this is scary. I mean, one that they really has to be kept an eye on now. Besides the one, the one that we know about, the one there's one that jumps that's been found in 1937, 47, somewhere like that. We also have this that just got found in 2011. Okay, because it's got 512 very old, many potential impacts. Okay, and it's going to be beginning in 2013. We got to keep an eye out for that. The rest of the stuff is a long ways out. I don't think any of us are going to be hanging around and living that long. The idea, though, that we got 2030 here, and 2042 for some people that might live that long. All right, potential impacts of six on that one there. You can go check that out, okay? This is all from NASA, Century Risk, Near Earth Object Program, okay? So that's the stuff that you need to keep an eye on. Oh, we've been recently observed, okay? All right, so. Objects not recently observed in 2048. We got something there that 2007 Viking 184. And otherwise, 2000 FT3, that would probably be coming along with the other one. Potential risk of 127 potentials, but that's over time for a long time. Who knows? But you got the year of 2013 listed. Got 2019 listed on this. 2020 listed on that. So there's lots of stuff to be keeping an eye on out there. 2013, and I we've seen that comet hit the sun. So there's also, you know, besides the Earth getting hit, we always have to worry about but the idea. I'm not worried about that. It's the idea of how hot will we get because the sun is into the supergiants, and we're going to keep getting close to the sun, and we're going to be getting closer to Rigel Cantaris B. So we got lots of issues to start thinking about, knowing about, and NASA's not letting us know anything. Okay, so you got stuff here that they go way, I mean, they got tons of data that they go way off into 2000. 2106, you know, they're way off into the future on stuff. They, they, they are looking out there constantly at stuff, okay? So when you go way up on the data, we have lots of stuff to be interested in around 2048, 2015, 2013, 2020, there's constantly some stuff to be wondering about, and then the idea that we're going into the super giants, so just all of a sudden ran into some new data tonight, so 
letting you guys know about it. Let me pause and go back. Now, I can't really remember on 2000 WL64, 2008 WL64, but I'll go to RSOE again in a minute and take a look at that. But you do have a nice alignment on the 20th, okay? And it's going to be closest on that. So it's got a nice alignment that it's going to be uh, either b above or below Earth there. But it's got a big alignment with Venus, Mercury, and, and the Earth there. Plus the idea that Mercury is pretty much looks like on the Sun's magnetism that day. So the, I'm pretty sure we'll have some pretty darn good earthquakes that day. So as you can see the alignment there, it should be above or below us there. Which way you want to look at it above or below us and flip it this way and the idea that you're not going to miss the alignment it's still there so that's going to be interesting and let's see it on ROS E and okay this is the original one I'm worried about is the idea that it's so doggone I mean it's not tiny it's not as big as the 2.1 so it's a mile kilometer small I mean a one kilometer smaller but the speed is much faster 122,472 kilometers an hour. And if you can see all these other objects and you can remember all the other speeds, they were just in the 50,000. It's not the double the speed and the size, and then it's not that far off. But the scary thing is, see this? This is a miscalculation on our SOE because check this out. Okay, emphasizing the size first, and then I'm going to give you, I mean, the speed. Emphasizing the speed. Sorry, folks, I'm not going to retape this. Emphasizing the speed, 76,104 miles per hour, 34.0402 meters per second, 34.022 kilometers a second, 21.14 miles a second, and it's a kilometer in size. And the red light that I've got is it's got condition 7, okay? It's got condition 7. And it's got an IU of 1786. And that's the perillion. Perillion, or perillion, how do you spell the perillion? Let's put the P. That's 1000 IU. 0. 0.0001786 IU. It's hella close because it's only 16,000 miles. Watch. It's only 16,602 miles. Okay? That's all that is. And once again on the November 20th, this is 64, 2008 WL64, it is 1.1 kilometer at the largest that we know of, 34.02 kilometers a second, okay, which is 21.14 miles per second, folks. How would you like to have anything that could go that fast? 21.14 miles per 1,001, there's 21.14 miles per second, folks. 76,101 miles per hour. It's only going to be 16,000 miles out. It's going to be closer than YU55. We know that. You can all remember the data on that. That this idea that it's it's less than 16, I mean, it's more than 16,000 miles to the moon, folks. So this thing's going to be coming whistling by. So it's going to do something. So basically, I've got about two minutes left and I'll show you the last go by the sun because if you look at the last video that didn't have any audio I was showing you this for the idea it looks like we have two comments I got this blown up 400% uh, we still got that one object by the sun and as you can see it sure looks like we've got a, a small uh, which is hella humongous because the earth folks is only like probably like a little let me get something in the idea in the mind of what side of the Earth is. Earth is something smaller than even this little speck right here, okay, in comparison to the size of the sun. So we got something that looks like it's got a pattern of about, you can see the circulation, the circular right there, of something right there, and the supergiants might be whamming into the back of the sun right there, all right? So there's a good possibility that some of this stuff in the supergiants with these guys and this BS about nothing, no comets are hitting the sun. Well, we know we've seen video from even Dutch being smart enough to show that one Soho a shot of the comet hitting. Now, this is another one of the V's, folks, and it looks like a comet, okay? And this was today, this shot was taken around, uh, 
And for the hell of it, since I got some time, legal disclaimer.